Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be rebuilding and cleaning a carburetor on a Honda Rebel 250 today. This is as easy as it gets carburetor job, so you guys can definitely do that on your own. First we're going to remove both of the side covers. The right side only has a screw Phillips head right here in the front and then it should pull right off. Okay, and then there's the two rubber grommets right here, so you can pull the cover right off after the screw is off. So same deal on the left side, there's a bolt right here in the front and a couple grammas that hold this side on. You pull it right off. Next, uh, close your petcock and disconnect the fuel line. Next I'm going to move back to the other side and I'm going to undo my uh, throttle cables. Once you got them undone, you just unhook them down here and you can pull them a little bit out of the way. Next thing right back on the left side we got a choke cable over here. So it's a 14 millimeter, you're gonna loosen the, loosen the, the housing and uh, then you should be able to unscrew it by hand and just pull the whole assembly out if, if it falls apart on you it's really no big deal there's a spring right here that holds this uh, little uh, cylinder on you want to want to clean this also with your carburetor cleaner this, this one is pretty sticky the bike's been sitting for about a year so uh, the carburetor I'm sure has got nasty gas in it. So now we're going to go ahead and loosen up this clamp again from the other side and these two 10 millimeter you don't need a whole lot usually you just crank them loose and uh, you can do the rest of it by hand alright so now the so I was saying the clamp in the back, I'll do that from the other side. Camera and the tripod couldn't really work one handed anymore. So I'm going to take this clamp all the way off. Take this little screw all the way off and open the clamp and slip it off. Don't worry about bending it, it's very easy to bend it back, open it like that. And now gonna slip this boot off the carburetor there's a little shield over here I'm gonna slip that back so now with my pry bar I just kinda push this this whole boot out of the way I kinda pried it out of the air box and just squeezed it so it's it's out of the way over here so now I should be able to slip the carburetor off. It's a little fight, but it'll save you a lot of time, as you can see. So just to show you this boot, I, now I have a room to take it out because the carburetor is not in the way. It kind of looks like this. Um, it won't hurt nothing when you squeeze it. it it's, it's a soft rubber. So yeah, it's not by the book, but it'll save you a lot of time. You see the carburetor is off in about 15 minutes, no big deal. Uh, so we're going to put it on the table and open it up. We are down here in Florida, this bike's been sitting for about a year. So uh, I assume the jets are going to be gummed up. There's very low miles on this motorcycle. The gentleman that owns it replaced the battery because it was dead and the bike didn't start. So that's why he brought it over here. Um, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot going on here besides just nastiness from old gas. Most of you watching this video have the same reason for doing this. Bike's been sitting. So it's once you uh, take the four bolts out, it, it's still attached 
with the little acceleration pump that it has so uh don't really look as bad as I ex expected but the show the jets are clogged up so let me wipe this table off and we're gonna remove the jets here okay down here this will be the idle jet in the middle right here that's the first jet to get clogged up usually what it looks like right there next we got our main jet which is here you can use a seven millimeter and take it all together with this motion tube see so you can you can see it's it's got some residue on it 30 um, this is your choke jet that one it's not removable so we gotta clean that in the in the body of the carburetor. Next, we're gonna remove the float. I got a little modified punch that I uh, focus here that I just shaved like this so it's not pointy, and uh, makes it easy to take this float out. And with the float, the float needle is going to come out. You can see it looks pretty dirty, just discolored from the old gas. This doesn't come off either, but it's very important to check to make sure it's not disgusting. Um, next, I'm going to take the float ball out. You can do that first if you wish. There's just a little right here it's a, a little clip I mean little little pin like this that's holding the uh, the spring there's gonna be a, a, a metal washer spring and then little plastic boot that that fits right here like a like a little seat so you got the seat then the wider part of the washer, I mean the wider part of the spring goes there, and the washer, and it, and it, and it all slips over right here. There's also another washer that sits on the bottom. So to recap, you got a first metal washer, then this piece sits on that has the plastic oops sorry that has the plastic seat for the spring then the spring with the wider end sitting in there then you will squeeze it down put another metal washer over the top and put your cotter pin inside when you put it back together so now I need to take the the top apart again four screws take the top off put a little pressure with your thumb on the top because it's spring loaded There's the spring. Take the spring out and now we can just push the slider out. Be careful with this diaphragm, you don't want to break it if it's a little bit stuck like this one. Carefully peel it off. Alright. So what we want to do here is we want to see this see this residue right here. That can really affect your acceleration, this buildup because uh, the fuel goes around this in the higher RPM the fuel goes around this needle into the engine so we're going to clean that needle so now we pretty much got the body as down as we want to uh, here's your air and gas mixture screw you can check where it's at I like to put it in two turns so you close it all the way 
don't over tighten it just by hand when you feel like it's sitting and then you got like the screw type so this will be half one one and a half and two I'm gonna leave it right there and uh, next we got our cleaning solution two options how you can clean these uh, individual parts you can either use your uh, a carburetor cleaner of your choice and basically with the rag paper towel you clean each you will clean each individual part make sure all the holes and everything that needs to be open it's open uh, the other way you can do which is my preferred way is this uh, carburetor uh, parts cleaner um, comes with a little handy tray I bought this one in Walmart for like 20 bucks and uh, all the parts like all the parts like my jets and everything I'm gonna put it right in there it's rubber safe for the rubber so I got a float needle here the flow is not really bad um, I got my uh, idle jet um, and this one I'm actually gonna put the body in there not all the way like kind of halfway to submerge this seat because I really like to make sure this seat is clean so it doesn't leak and the other thing I forgot to do I need to open up this uh, uh, acceleration pump so I'm I'm gonna take these three more uh, I'm gonna take these three screws off and probably dump this cover in there do that real quick This solution, if you buy a brand new one, you can probably just leave the stuff there for 15 minutes, half hour. Uh, it'll come out like brand new. It's really nice. Mine is a little worn out. I've had it for a long time. So I'll probably leave mine in there for at least half hour or maybe a little longer. Okay, and dump this in there. The spring is okay. Are you going to inspect this diaphragm if you have uh, issues with the accelerating of the motorcycle like it idles but when you hit the throttle it's got a big flat spot chances are that this diaphragm is bad uh, so you want to really inspect it this one looks okay so oh well, this is pretty good I want to dump this in there because my ball is pretty bad uh, gasket is not great but Every time you do these jobs, I recommend you get yourself uh, a rebuild kit, which will come with a, a, a gasket, a lot of the jets that I'm cleaning here. You wouldn't have to do that because you would have a new ones. And then I'm going to dump this kind of halfway in, just to, like this. I need to submerge the whole thing. I just want to make sure that the hole where the float needle sits it's submerged so now we're gonna let this sit for a half hour or so and we'll be back I'm waiting for my solution uh, to work on my carburetor I organize my parts you should always do that I got bad habits you know do this all the time so I know where the stuff goes so uh, keep your stuff together this is for my float ball this is the top of the carburetor with the four bolts holding it together with my spring this is all for the acceleration pump and the three for the acceleration pump cover so uh, it really helps to keep the stuff organized for uh, you guys who are doing it for the first time okay guys the other thing that I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for my carburetor solution I'm gonna drain this gas tank so I got me a little oil pan here and uh, yeah it looks pretty bad for the color of this fuel don't look too good so Got it on revert, uh, reserve, uh, drain all this out while I'm waiting for my carburetor to start putting it back together. Okay, so I took my parts outside. It's been about uh, 45 minutes. So I'm gonna pull them out and uh, we're gonna wash all this off with water. And we'll be right back on the bench. Okay guys, so look how nice this stuff uh, clean up, you know, everything looks like new basically, but everything is also wet, which is uh, no good for fuel system, so we're going to take a 
air compressor and dry everything out so now everything is nice and dry no water anywhere um, so we're gonna still take our carburetor cleaner and we're gonna clean a lot of the other parts that we haven't put in our solution so the carburetor cleaner is very good at taking any kind of residue you can see the discoloration on the paper all this uh, all this is the bad gas that kind of makes everything sticky so you want to clean everything up real good Now these jets that we uh, we had in the solution, what I like to use to clean all the little openings in the jets and in the carburetor, it's simply just the hair right here. It's one of the the wires out of a wire brush. Most people have wire brush like this. You can just rip one of these out with the pliers, and it's a great tool to clean all your jets. Uh, it'll fit through all these little holes. It'll fit through all these little holes, so uh, we gotta clean and run through. Like I said, this is clean because it was in the solution, but you still want to make sure you run this wire through all the openings. Run a flashlight through it, make sure everything is clean, because even even with this being in a solution already uh, it could still be dirty inside okay I'm going to still look through that later the other important part is right here in your in your bowl this has to be open <coughs> and the opening is right on the other side which is I believe this one right here so what you want to do you want to attach the nozzle on your on your carburetor sp spray and uh, you should be able to see this there you see it this has to be clean if this is clogged up you gotta blow some more air through it whatever you gotta do because that's your delivery of fuel into your nozzle right in here which is a next thing that you really gotta make sure it's clean right right here see that little nozzle let me get a screwdriver this little thing right here it's a spray nozzle so it enters right here so when you marry these two parts together this piece that we just cleaned will sit against here so next place I'm gonna insert my carburetor spray it's right there and I wanna see it spraying I think you can let me see uh, the right angle of the camera. You can see it spraying right there. So that's all good. Very important. If this, which is the accelerator pump, which, if that's clogged up, you're going to have a good idle. It's going to run okay in the high RPMs. But when you accelerate, you're going to have a flat spot. It's going to bog out. So if that's your problem, make sure you, you cleaned your acceleration pump make sure this diaphragm is not bad it's a very common issue that they cracked if there's any kind of crack here it's not gonna work so um, okay let's start putting this carburetor back together first I'm gonna start with the accelerator pump there's a rubber boot right here on this side make sure it's seated over the 
over there. And this sits over these these two two openings. Then is our little spring. Another thing that you want to make sure actually before put this back together that these openings are are good. There's another little deal right here that's got to be also working like that, you see? All these things got to be cleaned up in order for the acceleration pump to work. Now when you're putting this back together, take a note where your two openings are right here and they go against here. So make sure everything sits together properly. Hold the pressure down. Put out three screws here. Okay, so this is how it works. When when you turn the throttle, it'll it'll move this part. It'll push down on the diaphragm. The gas will start spraying from here into the nozzle and it, into the engine. So that's parts together. Next, we want to take our same wire. Make sure our choke is open up. Remember the idle jet goes in the middle between the choke and the main jet. And our main jet here. Nice. I'm going to look with our flashlight inside our seat for the flow needle. Looks like cleaned up really good. That was the reason why I submerged this part of the body into the solution. Because on some motorcycles you can remove this seat. Uh, on this one you can't. So, um, next we got our flow needle. It's always better to replace it. I'm just gonna clean this one with the carburetor cleaner. Bike has like virtually no miles, it's just been sitting. So, I'm hoping this will work. But it's always better to replace at least the flow needle and the float ball gasket. Okay, next is our uh, acceleration pump deals we were talking about earlier. So first we got this washer, then we're gonna put our pump, I mean ball, then we got our plastic that will sit inside like this and we're going to put our spring I'll push that spring down the outer washer and the cotter pin open the pin up There you go. That's what it looks like when it's together. Now I'm going to put my four screws back.
all the parts on this particular motorcycle look to be in uh, good shape overall it's not old enough to be all nasty and hardened up it's just the old gas made it to be gummed up but this o-ring here the fuel line it's OEM it's still really nice and soft so we're not going to be replacing any of that stuff but if on your bike uh, this things uh, look bad then you really want to make sure you replace all those make sure this sits properly sometimes it's a little tricky to get this to seat right I'm gonna put the screws in and we're gonna test it with the with the air make sure it's not pinched so now I'm gonna take my my air and blow right into this hole and it should come up just like that that's a good way to test that you got it together right all right so it's time to put this back together fight this back in same way we took it out put our nuts back on the intake manifold put the other nut uh, we're gonna put all these things back together the way we took them apart I'm gonna fight this rubber boot to put it on and I'll come back to you in a minute and we're gonna try to start the bike up okay so we got everything back together our cables our boot so it wasn't really that bad to fight that boot back on uh, on the other side our side covers everything's back the choke cable so I just put some fresh fuel in the gas tank and we're going to try to start it up. Pull the choke. Okay guys, so I'm going to let it run for a while. It's been sitting for uh, probably more than a year, so it's still uh, good for it to run some and uh seems like everything is going to be fine so i appreciate you watching i hope this helped you uh, as you see it's not really a big deal um the whole job might take you about two hours including the waiting time for the solution so um thanks again and please subscribe if you find this helpful and uh, see you in my next video bye